Hello and welcome to The Secret Show. It's episode number 277 of Flat Earth and Other Hot Potatoes. I'm Patricia Steer and Mark Sargent joins me for The Secret Show. Mark. Hello, Patricia. Can you hear me? Yes, I can. Are you coming to us from a continent uh -huh. on the other side of the ice wall or are you still on Whitby Island outside of Seattle? I'm on. Are you hearing an echo? No. Crap. Hang on. Let me put in my headset. You Sorry. hear an echo? A little bit. We haven't done this for a week and already our whole concept is falling apart. Nope, nope, nope. We're good. I mean, I'm I'm just about this far away from quitting. I can't work under these conditions. We're good? That is so weird. I am hearing like a loop. It's like three or four seconds behind us. You know what? We're just going to live through it. Well, Hopefully. just that'll be bad. Just take the headphones out. I don't hear an echo. I don't think anybody in the live chat hears an echo. Everybody in the live chat's very annoyed at our non-smooth opening. Hey, anyone, any echo going on? Echo, 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 hello? hello? <laughs> um, I know. Usually. No echo. Jim All right. Well, Sugarwish we're gonna, 905 says we're going to live with it. Uh, Peanut Gallery says that that happens when, you know, kind of like every time a bell rings, an angel gets its wings. Right. Uh, anytime a celebrity dies, we have technical problems. Did a celebrity die? Yeah. Uh, the the little girl from the monster, or the, the younger daughter from the monsters, I think, died. The monsters. The monsters. Oh, I can't picture the daughter. I can picture the older one who looked normal with blonde hair. That Yeah, that one. Oh, okay. Oh, well, that's yeah. sad. Well, you know, hopefully she had a great life with the money that she made from that show. Maybe. I have no idea. Maybe. All right. Well, let's start our show as if none of that ever happened. Let's start off The Secret Show, episode 277, with a toast. Anybody who has a drink of any sort, raise it, or even an invisible one, in a toast where we are going to toast those who want to bring flat earth down, those who want to cancel flat earth, those who believe that flat earth is a lie or who think behind the curve has destroyed flat earth, let's toast to them. Let's, let's give them love in answer to their hate. So here's to our haters. Got it. So is that sort of like uh, for those about to troll, we salute you, that sort of thing? Pretty much. Well. Yeah. To, what are you drinking? Trolls, may I get a thousand more of them? <laughs> Seriously. Brian Stavely says, I pity the fools. <laughs> no, nah, I mean, look, that's going to happen. There's haters out there for everything. And, uh, you know, we should probably get right into the whole. Well, what do you want to talk about first? You want to talk about well, the Los Angeles conference first? Or do you want to talk? Let's, yeah, let's start with the LA conference first. But I do have a question from Five Arts Liberalis. We had a nice conversation on Skype last night. Uh, he's asking me what I'm drinking. I'm drinking kind of like Carolyn F E A Z or Caroline F E A Z chick, a lemon drop, but kind of not. Um, got some uh, vodka and some lemon juice and a little bit of sugar. But we've got the organic sugar and the vegan vodka. You know, it's right. got to be special. The uh, organic lemon and it's super tart i hardly put any sugar in it but mm. you know we'll I'm, I'm just having red wine that's the way to go nothing special so in the description box by the way peanuts clark is asking about the video that came out about the fe power coin it's pretty expensive yeah it is pretty expensive i put a link to the video that talks about the flat earth power coin in the description box of this video you ordered one mark for those who don't know later you can go watch the video uh, you should be coming in a couple weeks, right? Not even. Uh, I so the you know everything most well, I should say most of the stuff, including this, comes to me unsolicited. And so PowerCoin decided. I think their main plants over in Italy. They decided mm -hmm. to create a flat Earth silver coin. Yeah. Two two ounces and you know fully painted and very very cool. And they shot me an email and says, "Hey, if you like the coin, you know maybe you should you know think about getting one." I thought, ah, I don't it know. wasn't like if you like the coin, we'll give one to you. It was like, I, I, the coin. I, I kind of explained well, that's purse. what I, I would have wanted. But at the same time, it's like, come on, who am I? I mean, they probably, who knows, who knows how many people they sent that email to. Oh, of course. They sent it to me as well. And I'm toying with the idea of buying one. Um, it's very pretty. The only thing I don't like about it is it says across the top, and it's got um, um, interesting things on both sides. It's quite pretty. Right. Is it says, uh, 
greatest conspiracies. So it's part of a series about conspiracies. Yeah. And I said from the start, I'm not a conspiracy theorist. I don't think Flat Earth is technically a conspiracy because conspiracy was a word coined by I think the CIA or some nefarious organization in order to make people seem crazy because then you can be called a conspiracy theorist and then you can be dismissed. In essence, anything when two or more people gather together and plot against others, it's a conspiracy. But right. I, I think of Flat Earth as being truth, just plain and simple truth. So that's the one thing I wouldn't have put greatest conspiracies on the thing. But you yeah. know what? Uh, I'm thinking of buying it. You know, if you're gonna if you're gonna make a, a series out of it, I don't know what else you'd put. What myths, legends, uh, something along those lines. And come on, we come from the 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 circles around us. There are a lot of conspiracy people in the flat Earth awakening, flat Earth investigation. Um, Ranty Flat Earth in the chat and says he's a conspiracy analyst. Yeah. Yeah. Anyway. Yeah. Anyway, it's a it's a cool coin. So here's the funny story about it. So. Uh, it was sent to me uh, and, or I'm sorry, the, the email. Yeah, the email was sent to me and I bounced around and I actually decided I was going to get it right after I came back from the Los Angeles trip that we just took down to uh, uh, QE 2019 conference because I had used the little prop, you know, I've got that little prop with the uh, the domed enclosed structure, but it's, it's kind of uh, opaque on the outside. It's got a brass ring around it it's, and you have to kind of look inside it. And it's kind of dark on the inside. It's unwieldy. And, um, you know, every time I see the brass ring, it's a paperweight, essentially. I always think yeah. brass monkey. <laughs> that funky monkey. Yeah, it's it's cool. But it, but at the same time, people would, like I, I caught when we were at the restaurant with our special guests. Uh, I caught uh, the one the one guy grabbing his phone and using the flashlight on it just to look inside it. Mm -hmm. I thought, you know what? I got to come up with something easier than that. So I, I came home and made the decision. All right, I'm going to get one of these. Uh, you know, it doesn't need to be solid silver, but what the heck not. R You're going to bite the bullet on it or yeah, bite, bite the, the, bite the they, silver. They, they are not cheap. They cost about as much as, as one of Chris Pontius's models. Uh, but it is portable. And I didn't see any other small portable models like that out there. So I sent a, um, uh, so I put a, I made a compilation video. You probably saw it. It was uh, the power coin girl and then another guy i think in england who reviews them uh from bullion something something and his review was actually pretty cool you know he showed it off really well and was wearing white gloves and, and that was fun and at the end i said i put it on my channel i said hey just so you know i'm uh, I, I like it love it i'm gonna i'm gonna order one of these things and and all of a sudden next thing i said i'm probably gonna take it with me in some of my interviews next thing you know they write me back almost instantly i said you know what if you're because it's on pre-order right now so if you order it right now, you're not going to get it till probably May. But the demo, the the prototype, <laughs> they said we are absolutely sending you the prototype, the one that's literally in the video. So oh nice, yeah, well, it's only been touched by white cotton gloves. Exactly, and they are going to it'll it'll be here within 24 hours. <laughs> so it's like now, okay, they're pricey to be honest, three hundred and seventeen dollars and fifty one cents. And Mark and I don't receive any proceeds from them. Nope, we, nope, we, we don't. didn't get any free either. But uh, you can use the discount code flat five off. Yeah. And you get uh, $15.99 off, flat yeah. five off. I, Once it, again, it, no proceeds. We are not connected to the company. No. Just no, but I will off. mention, just so you know, I will, because I give credit where credit is due. I mean, like the little, the little brass thing that I carry around, uh, the guy that initially made those, I don't know where he is. I can't find him anymore. So I can't even give him credit for it. I, there's a video on my channel, but if you go to that address, it doesn't go anywhere. So people ask me, it's like, oh, who made that for you? I say, PowerCoin, Jerry, why the heck not? Yeah. And uh, who knows what designs they'll come up with in the future. So I'm going to get one. It's just kind of a lot, you know. I mean, a, well, silver has value. So, yeah, you know, for those who are saving up for the uh, apocalypse when we're supposed to have silver and gold. Oh, yeah, there you go. There you go. <laughs> there you I mean, go. technically, it is, it, you know, not, it is two ounces of pure silver. So it is something. But at the same time, that's not what I have it for. It's just a cool. It's very know, detailed. I, very I like cool. I like cool portable things I can carry with me. And I literally, there are no little flat earth models like that out there. I mean, there's just the one. And we know that many don't believe in the enclosed world and the dome that you talk about. It does come in a sort of case that's got a dome on it. You can take yeah. the coin out, but you can but, take it off. There's there's the yeah. big, there's the big difference in that the one that I was I've been carrying around, the one I carried the last trip. You can't take that thing off, and some people have tried to unscrew it off. 
I don't think it's meant oh, to Oh, you can't on. take it off. I didn't know that. No, well, you, well, you can't. But the this one uh, from these guys does. The, you oh, know, just pops right off. I see what you're saying. So, and it's and it, the my, the best part about it, even if I do have the dome on it, it's clear. So it's instant, instantaneously. You can compare the two, which is the whole the whole goal. It's like, okay, here's globe, here's a um, you know variation of the flat Earth model. So great, wonderful. Uh, as soon as I get it by by next week, I will be able to show it off to you. All right, wonderful. And yep. uh, I do. We sound like we're selling the thing once again. Mark and I didn't get any coins free, and we will not be getting coins free. We get no proceeds from sales of coins. We're not affiliated with the company. We just thought it was cool. And a link in the description box if you want to look at it yourself and get the money together for it. Um, that being said, I wish I had some free. <laughs> yeah, me too. And I wish I got proceeds from the sale. I wish I would have thought of it, but you know. Oh, I don't care about the proceeds <laughs> of the sale. I just like cool little things like that. Oh, I yeah, love I little do. trinkets and knickknacks. Exactly. So. And I have some of the uh, flat earth coins that some of us do have already. So I have to get that, it. That that being, you know. that being said, sorry, last thing on this topic, which mm -hmm. is, so I'm already paranoid enough about losing the brass one because right. it's the only one I got. Right. But when I hand this to people, you know, if I'm interviewing, it's like, oh, yeah, take a look. It, I will absolutely have these awkward moments like, yeah, I'm going to need that back. Uh, can you give me that coin back uh, yeah, right now? Yeah, have that coin back. <laughs> Funny. Yeah. I hear from the live chat that there's a large number of thumbs down. We just began. We haven't been talking for very many minutes at all. Um, I just want to let those who are new to the channel, and there's quite a few to the Netflix documentary. I've noticed an increase in subs and Facebook friend requests and messages of all sorts and nothing negative. Well, a few negative things we'll get to, but very very few. Um, the thumbs down from what many have told me come from one or two channels who have multiple SOC accounts. And they do it all of the time. Anybody in the live chat can write the name of that channel or those channels if they like. I'm not going to say it and give them any street cred. But they do it all the time. And then in a day or two, um, those thumbs down because they're all from one channel. Yes, Randy Flatter, it says one or two trolls with multiple accounts, correct? Uh, those thumbs down somehow YouTube does something and realizes they're all coming from the same people and then dismisses them. So yeah. uh, then it resolves. But it doesn't matter if I had a thousand thumbs down. I'm not going anywhere. And I don't know they don't reflect the truth because we have a lot of wonderful people here and great people that you and I meet everywhere. And although people don't always agree with the way you and I go about doing things or um, things we say, everyone that is here for truth understands that we're here for the right reasons. And the right reasons are to try to get the truth out in our own individual way, which is why you'll never see me doing hit pieces or criticizing others for doing whatever it is they do, whether uh, that thing that they do is only talk about water being level or the thing they do is only make a map or a model or a song or a blog or poetry or uh, street activism I think it's all good and I support all of it. Agreed. I'll drink to that. Hey, excuse me. <laughs> all right. So, what else? Uh, uh, talking about LA now? Well, let, let's get to the giant Netflix elephant in the room. Oh, that. Does that uh, movie come out on Netflix yet? I, I don't know. Okay. So, for those of you who've been leaving, living in a cave for the last two weeks, uh the documentary that patricia and i and bob and jaron and chris Pontius and nathan thompson and so on and so on uh called behind the curve which went through the film festival routine and got critically acclaimed during uh 2018 was released on the four big platforms uh, itunes google play amazon prime and youtube and it got some traction you and so, i were unaware when we did it none of us in it were aware of the fact that they were calling it behind the curve, I would have said, hold up, hold up. <laughs> I don't like that name. All of us would have probably said that. Maybe you think it's kind of an okay name, but mm. because it will make people who believe in the globe feel safe. I, I think beyond the curve would have been... A, that would have been a better name. I think this would have been a slightly better name, mm -hmm. uh, but I don't know if you'd even thought of it at the time. Yeah. But anyway, so... The last we, we also didn't know. Sorry, I have to interrupt and then I'll let oh, you tell the story. Uh, we also didn't know what would happen to the film. They said they were going to try to sell it, and we all signed our rights away, so none of us were paid for it or receive any proceeds. We were fine with that because we thought, hey, they're going to get a true look into the lives of flat earthers, right. and that will be good because most people think we're nut jobs living in our mom's basement wearing tinfoil hats, sitting in our shorts, right. eating a bag of Cheetos. 
although that describes some of us, <laughs> not all of us. So um, we didn't know where it was going to go. And then it went to a film festival and we thought, oh, that's cool. And it started going to different film festivals all across the plain. And then from there, it went to iTunes, et cetera, et cetera, Amazon Prime. And then, well, I'll let you take it away. Netflix came next. Uh, and be before, yeah. before I mention that, I have to say that I, I, I just cleared up the echo. And oh. the echo was because I had this show on in the YouTube window on standby behind me. And as you know, there's a there's a eight or nine well, second well, there's delay. There's also no pause button. Anybody who makes videos has noticed this. They took away, at least for me, the pause button so you can pause it and still have it up. Oh, yeah, yeah. And I, I was going to do that, but that's rookie. It, it was a rookie mistake on my part. So forgive me, guys. If I if I looked a little. Yeah, I know. I hate to see it. The uh, but it's true. I was I, in fact, I was because I was just going back to because I wanted to pop up a particular video which just came on the scene yesterday. And all of a sudden I see my face and it's like, wait, why am I? Oh, uh, that's where the sound's coming. From. All right. Let's check in the chat. Is there any lag and any echo? No, no, no. It's gone now. All right. Any good. any lag would have been a, it would have been completely on my fault. Uh, my my fault. Uh, so no, just ignore me. At this all point. right. Okay. So the end. Here's here's how the story goes. So it was on all the the major ones. You know, again, Amazon Prime is no joke. Amazon's a big big outfit. iTunes, big YouTube. You've heard of them. Uh, Google Play. No, nobody uses that. So all of a sudden, it gets released on Netflix. They were the last ones. Who knows? Maybe it was part of the contract. We don't know the details of exactly who bought the film and was it released to all these, you know, in stages or was Netflix a holdout? Who knows? All we knew is that Netflix, for example, people said, "Oh, you know, Netflix was you know part of the producers of the film." No, as a matter of fact, Netflix was in Toronto with us because they were the biggest sponsor of the Toronto Film Festival last year, and we thought that they would pick it up then, and they didn't. But now, of course, it's on Netflix. And when it came out on Netflix, I had sorely underestimated their market share. Because I mean, I didn't know. I don't really watch Netflix. I have the ability on my TV. I don't have television. I don't get, um, I don't get TV shows. I would have to pay for Netflix to get a show, and right. I don't. Right. Um, people talk about Netflix a lot, and I figured it was popular, but. You know, we didn't hear very many people talk about it that had seen it on iTunes or on Amazon Prime right? until just, just uh, last week Last week when it was dropped on Netflix. And then, wow. So this is a lesson to anybody who makes any sort of movie. Get it on Netflix ASAP. You will get an audience. I had heard rumors some years ago that Netflix had become the bane of Hollywood because they were making so much money on their streaming service that they decided to start th their own film production house and they were just buying they had so much money they were just buying scripts and buying projects all over the place which is why netflix has so many of the new television shows out there uh, for for better or for worse they they own a lot of the streaming television and a lot of original productions even some of the minor minor marvel universe characters so the point is, because they're such a huge streaming service, they don't they don't have to nickel and dime you. Nothing is a la carte, or most of it's not a la carte. So all of a sudden, behind the curve, shows up for free on their service, and anyone that ha had an excuse didn't have an excuse anymore. And so simultaneously, a lot of people in media and a lot of people in general watch this. And we saw this just this broad spectrum thing where... Uh, and we'll get to the Jaron thing in a second, where Jaron said he had high school friends from years yeah. ago that were contacting him. I had high school friends, and I couldn't even tell you what decade I talked to him last. And Wait, my cats are fighting. If anybody hears that, it's very disconcerting. So, is it? Are they really fighting? Can anyone hear that? Um, yeah, I can it's hear a fake bit. fighting. I have a girl cat, and both my boys are fixed, but and um, they're all the same age. They're going to be four in March. They, uh, sometimes I think they, even if they've been fixed, they get a, a sexual urge that they don't quite understand. And uh -huh. they kind of fake attack the girl cat by b slightly biting her neck that they, it was what a male would do in mating. And then she says, meow, meow, like, get off me. And then they, eventually they, they bite her neck and then they say to themselves, now what do I do? And they, <laughs> and then they just go back to playing with toys. So yeah. are they all right? They're all right, but I just wanted, it just sounded like my cats were destroying each other, sorry. And I'm going to try to reset the, the stream key someone told me to do, um, and I and so if there's any weird noise, please excuse while Mark continues talking. Continue. Okay, 
So <laughs> after net the Netflix thing happened, uh, we all of a sudden got a lot of media focus all over the place. Uh, a whole bunch of reviews, a whole bunch of people, YouTube channels that hadn't gotten into flags were getting into it. Uh, just people in general. Again, you know, I had high school friends that were, were doing Facebook posts. People that, for whatever reason, it's like, oh, they just. A lot of people accidentally stumbled into it, and Netflix, and it, and it became. It started to trend on Netflix, and you can look up the old screenshots. I mean, it, that's one of the things that happens. So yeah, <laughs> because of that, the the documentary was under the microscope, and everybody, you know, with all its flaws, uh, we were we were being called out on stuff, and so uh, you know, you and I caught hell, and Chris Pontius was actually left pretty much alone. Nathan Thompson got a whole bunch of new people <laughs> for his groups, and which was really awesome. Uh, Bob and Jaron caught the worst of it, of course, because of uh, the way that the documentary was edited. And as you and I both know, it leaned it, at the it leaned in a scientific way, even though it was a oh look at that giant cats taking over the stage. Your microphone, Patricia. Sorry, I turned my mic off because I was attempting to do some behind the scenes stuff to make the stream better. And I, I quit because I can't figure it out. Stream seems fine. Does it? Okay. Some people were saying reset the stream key and I couldn't figure out how. And I was afraid that things would be making noise. So I muted my mic. How Got unprofessional it. of me. That That's okay. Right. So uh, as you know, uh, again, it was supposed to be a look at the people at Flat Earth. You know, the a snapshot of 2017. And, it, and for that... It didn't go a lot into the nuts and bolts. Of course, it couldn't avoid it entirely. But the when you got to watch yourself when you're around media because they will wait. In fact, I joked about this with somebody today. Um, uh, you know, I could have been with National Geographic for a week. I was with them for three days. And if I, you know, had this one moment where I relaxed and they'd ask me a question like, oh, yeah, what, what do you think of the Trump and the whole Trump thing? And if I would have said, even though I don't because I don't vote, I said, oh, I hate Donald Trump, that is absolutely what they would have used. Of course. Right in there. They look for the weakest moments that they can. Yes. And a lot of, I know personally, I don't remember everything I said, of course, but I was sure. on my guard. But because I'm on my guard and I'm not going to say certain things, um, and they did ask me certain questions, you know, and ask me what I believe X, Y, and Z. And I try to play it, be, be honest about myself and what I think for the community, right. but also not try to make those who don't understand Flat Earth and don't understand we'd look into 9-11 Boston bombing, you know what I'm saying. Mm -hmm. um, because if you throw all of that out there, you know, no one died, no one got hurt. You sound insane, even if maybe some of us truly believe that. And in some cases, me too. Right. So um, you have to be careful. And if you slip up once, they've got it on film and they're going to comb through hours of it to find that. And right. if you say anything super smart, or if you show anything involving proof, that's cutting room floor material, let me tell you. Yep. They'll only put up your weakest moments and the things that make you and paint you the character they've already decided that you are. Right. And they decided that I was, after meeting me, I guess, unbeknownst to me, that I'm the kooky, crazy cat lady uh, who you know, is attacked by other people and thinks they're crazy for doing it, but doesn't even analyze her own beliefs in flat earth and find that equally as crazy. Right. And we all were painted as a caricature of ourselves. Some of those things are true. I am a cat lady, sure, but I'm not crazy. Sure. And the, the shot they took, I thought it was interesting that, uh, as you know, you know, we had a chance to see it first before anybody up in Toronto, uh, in the hotel room uh, of the director. And he asked me, I thought it was interesting, they asked me if it was okay they took the shot at me with the green button. Mm. And I, after I watched it the second time, I knew what happened because I, of course, you know, you and I were at the Kennedy Space Center. I know full well I smacked that button. I mean, it's right there. It's next to the console. And the second it stopped, it didn't work, I immediately thought, oh, what's well, the touch screen? You know, I'll, I'll see if I can bypass it. I mean, good Lord, I did tech support for 20 years. And it was a giant button right there in your face. Yeah, it was a giant button. You could, it was literally the only button 
There was so no other buttons there. It was edited to show that Mark yes. Sargent, you know, believes in flat earth and everything, but he's inept and he can't even see a button right there in front of his very eyes, which means he can't see the globe earth and all of its wonderful proofs in front of his very eyes. And Sickening. it was the only thing, I, I'm not going to take too many shots at Daniel. It was the only oh, thing. Oh, they painted your character in such a way that made you like a lovelorn fool for me. Um, also loving the attention and adulation from the community. And um, they, they just painted each one of us as- I know, I know. But but that was the only thing he felt guilty about. Meaning, because- Oh, it was you know what? You it... probably didn't feel guilty about anything. No, no, no. no. It was guilty. No, no, Daniel I saw, Clark I saw feeling it. guilty all the way to the bank. Well, I saw it in his eyes. I mean, he asked me, you know, he literally asked me if it was okay because he knew it was a cheap shot. What if you what? said, no, movie already made, who cares? Well, what? again, he asked me. So at that, but that being said, everything else was fair game. So the 15 degree shift that Bob talked about with the, and again, it's not a ring laser gyro. I'd like to correct because I've said that several times. No, it's a fiber optic gyro. Not that most people would care. And then of course the experiment with Jaron at the end. Uh, the, it, he, I know that he wanted to take shots at us and I'll explain why in, in a little bit, because you and I talked about this before with the director's commentary when, you know, when he, the way he edited it, yes, he, he made Bob look like he was trying to hide something and he made Jaron look like he botched, botched the experiment, which was not the case. And I will not do it justice by trying to explain all the details. Bob and Jaron have done a wonderful job at, at explaining their circumstance and I don't think they failed in the slightest. I mean, no. at, the, at the same time they were shooting that documentary, we had a full-blown team over doing the Lake Balaton thing over in Europe. Uh, doing the that. demonstration that Jaron attempted to do, he did the best. He did the best. Uh, he did yeah. the best of his ability. And they actually took a portion of the middle of it and used it as the final scene. Right. That interesting. And then they rolled credits as if Jaron had just found curve right the so. saving the saving grace and we we have discussed this is before. that i don't have a firearm <laughs> that's the saving <laughs> oh we'll meet them again no I no mean, doubt uh no it was that by the time he, he had forgotten but by that time daniel and team had worked with the documentary so long that they had absorbed enough of the material that nothing was shocking and, and weird to them. They could not be flat smacked because they were working with it so closely. Whereas the average audience member, because I, you and I, and we had sat with, with audience members, by the time you get a hundred minutes, you finish the hundred minutes of that movie, you're so you're spinning, lack of a better term. Your your mind is racing so much that you have no idea so what true. the heck what the heck happened with Jaron. And even if Bob looks like he was hiding something, you could never in a million years explain what the heck you, he may have been, been hiding. Bob was mic'd up and knew he was mic'd up. You know, yeah. when you're mic'd up, you've got this box about the size of a card deck that's very heavy and metal. And then right. you've got some cording and then you've got something clipped to you. Yeah. You can't, you know, you've got it. it it's heavy. It's, it's, Bob wasn't saying anything other than, I think essentially we've got some information. We need to figure out exactly how to, what it means first, and then we'll tell everybody. Uh, and I, I think that's what they did yeah. in, in the end, but they just, you know, put things in there that would call to mind that we're a community that's going to hang on to our false belief regardless, because we're lost, lonely losers and we need flat earth. Otherwise we would apparently be lost, lonely losers. Right. This way we've got, you know, a couple of friends by our side, making our egos feel normal. Wasn't there a song there? Have you heard about the lonesome loser? That's that was a song, right? Yeah, and the thing is, is Who's that they talked that? about the yeah. Dunning Kruger, and the ones talking about the Dunning, I think it's called Dunning Kruger. Dunning Kruger. But, yeah, they're the ones suffering from it. They were projecting pretty yeah. much their thoughts, but it's funny. And the thing is, is that people are calling it a hit piece or a mockumentary. A mockumentary is not what it was. No. Um, a mockumentary is where they're mocking something and everybody in it is an actor. Yeah. Mo mo examples of mockumentary. There's a director that does basically nothing but mockumentaries would be um, uh, A Mighty Wind, Best in Show. Yeah. Uh, you know, stuff like that. Where Best in Show. It's, a, it's about a dog show and yeah. none of those people 
probably have dogs or go to dog shows and they're all actors with different names than they really go by in real life and they're playing right. everyone's playing a character it's, it's a documentary it's mocking a documentary it's not really a documentary all right and yep. uh, the other thing people said that this was was a hit piece now i see we've taken a hit but it's just a movie made by glow believers right. who had before they went in although they told us it would be fair and balanced the concept that the earth's a globe. So it's just like everybody else we meet out there who is stuck with their belief and um, they don't want to go any further because right. they're very happy and comfortable right where they are. Right. And they think anybody looking into the shape of the earth or any other thing is crazy. Now, my opinion because I know you, you probably disagree with a little bit of this. Burn you, them! That's is that, no, 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 you know me. I, I like vengeance as much as the- They're so that, nice though too. The, the ones who stab you in the back are always so nice. Uh, Yeah, what was it? Mm -hmm. uh, true friends stab you in the front. Yeah, I dated someone like that. Look what happened to me. <laughs> Let me be a lesson to you kids. <laughs> have, have a drink. Uh, So, okay, so Cheers. here's here's my, my humble opinion on this. I think in the in the beginning, it was supposed to be a human interest piece and we were supposed to be harmless. You know, again, we were not going to be a threat. It was going to be a kind of light and they were going to play it as neutral as they could because ah, we're not doing that much harm. Right? I think that's what you want to believe. No, no, no. Did Carolyn you, did, Clark did, 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 made a Sandy Hook video I, about how that's all real again, and anyone who believes otherwise is crazy. Well, she well, has pa a past well, record of offenses in my opinion. Look at it from the outside. As they were going along, it appeared harmless. And and yes, I mentioned yes, yes. because the, the director's commentary, which you and I were one of the only people to listen to, uh, the the director's commentary also seemed, you know, they, they weren't really pushing any buttons. They weren't taking any digs. But they did, when they got to the end of the movie, towards the end of the movie, there was something that really bothered them. And When they three, were filming it. When but, they were filming it, it mm -hmm. really, and by the, the director's commentary has Daniel and Caroline and the main editor, Nick. And there was something that, that they gave away when when they saw this and that was when i was doing my q a session in raleigh north carolina during uh, the conference of 2017 there was a 12 year old that went up to the microphone and asked questions and i was really happy about it and this bothered them a lot because the they they mentioned it's different when kids start looking up to you as some sort of pseudo role model, pseudo celebrity. Basically, they're listening to you. We're so, brainwashing the children. I, exactly. Think of the children. It's all fun and games until the children. You are know, involved. the school system and the mainstream media are who are brainwashing the children and parents, well meaning uh, parents who are repeaters yeah. of and, the school system stuff in the mainstream media. And they all said, right, during that thing, they all, you could hear them all agree that at that point they had to they were good that's how they were going to spin the movie because at that point they were on the defensive which was okay we can't just sit here and let them do this they we're are gonna... both childless as well i think they use that in his excuse i think all three of them are yes yeah so um, okay yeah. so and you're thinking okay and for me that's i thought okay that's kind of an obscure thing but it was completely validated, and this is where i tie it back to the video that i'm staring at right now a video came out only yesterday uh, by a big channel who has never done even a conspiracy video before. He's an ASMR channel, of all things, uh, with 600,000 subs called Ephemeral Rift. Weird name. I love the word ephemeral. Yeah, it's cool. Pretty weird. And he does a video, and I wasn't even going to listen to it, and it's called The Danger of Dogma and Myth, God, Flat Earth, Aliens, Bigfoot, Illuminati, etc. In fact, there was so much in the title of that's the reason I was like, oh, I don't want to watch this. It's like he's going to just go off on all these different conspiracies. And But here's the thing. It was 45 minutes long, which was interesting. And I started listening to it, and I realized that he kept using Flat Earth more and more and more. You know, And, and finally, he got to the point about the 20-minute mark where he, he just fessed up, and he says, okay, the reason why I made this video is because I watched the documentary Behind the Curve. And he was going on and gone. And by the time he got to the 30 minute mark, then he even changed gears again. And he says, okay, I, I you know, I'm gonna be straight with everybody. The straw that he's verbatim, the straw that broke the camel's back was when I watched 
this 12 year old kid walk up to the microphone and engage with, you know, with, you know, with the speaker that was up there, meaning me. And he, he was almost, it was almost verbatim the same line that Daniel took, which was, you know, stay away from the kids, keep the kids out of this. And he was in, and, and that's the only reason he even made this video was because it's like, well, you know what you said, the thing of the children, the children. And it was like, wow. And in fact, one of the phone calls I got last night, uh, you know, cause I don't get a lot of trolls on strange world. One of the calls that came in, he got to that point. I was listening, listening. And the second he said, you know, keep the kids out of it. You know, that's when I cut him off and, and, you know, sent a drone. Strike. I mean, the children are our future. We all know that. And currently we're living under a lie system. So those parents who are brave enough to teach their children at home about flat earth, with as much information as they can get, and then you know allow their child to be in, let's say, public school and learn the heliocentric model, right. and that sort of thing, they shouldn't be punished or belittled. It's like parents who believe in, um, in that God created man as opposed to evolution and have been right. silently teaching their children that forever. I don't think there's anything wrong with that. I don't think there's anything wrong with parents going, uh, I don't either. Around the school system and teaching their children certain things. Mm -hmm. Look what the school system does when it comes to any sort of mental or physical competition. For many years now, they've been giving the younger children awards just for showing up. Now, when I was in school, you got an award for excelling in spelling, excelling in sports. That way, you would look, if you were a youngster, up at the other children who were doing better than you, and you would naturally say, next year, I'm going to win the award next year i'm going to uh excel i'm going to achieve right. now just show up you're a winner everyone's a winner yeah the playing field's been leveled and people's minds have been leveled everyone's everyone has everyone is devoid of any sort of desire to achieve succeed and learn. Learning is a four-letter word. People even say things like, I'm going to watch TV and switch off. Right. I don't want to switch off. I want to stay on till they put me in the grave. Learning every day, hey, without that, there's no reason to be alive. Right. I, I abs absolutely agree with you. The Look, here's a message for the trolls and this particular gentleman from ephem Ephemeral Rift and anybody in science, which is, uh, as far as the kids go, the children, better that they're with us than with you. All right. And, <laughs> and by that, no, I, I'm absolutely serious when I say yes. that. Because, yes. Look, because you are telling them they're just this tiny little rock that's flying through space and their lives are worth nothing. We're telling them that their lives are worth everything. Mm. So what's more positive there? Right. And uh, come on. I mean, this guy didn't even know about the U.gov survey, which I should probably mention. This is going to be a little dig Please. and it's going to be kind of hard to hear for some people. But the U.gov survey, which, when, you know, the big number, the reason why National Geographic even talked to us is because the 18 to 24 year olds, over a third of them already don't believe in the globe. But that's not the part that I thought that was really interesting. The part that I thought was interesting was the group that they couldn't talk to. Remember, 18 as low as they can go. Right. It's the 12 to 17 year olds. What do you think those numbers are? I'm telling you, those numbers are way higher than the 18 to 24, but you can't talk to them. And we already have. So what are you going to do? You got, you got nothing. We, we've got, we're holding all the cards at this point. They didn't understand when they allowed the internet to come out that we wouldn't just use it for playing games and emailing each other. We there would use it to connect with each other and share ideas and information. And that's how this has grown. Yeah. It's the truth. And eventually, even if all we had were smoke signals, it would get out, but it would have taken much longer. And that's and some say that's, maybe they let it out, knowing we had the internet coming along and they've, and this is a controlled release or something. Yeah. We don't really know either way, but it's out. And YouTube could shut us down in a split second by sure. just, you know, blocking out the words flat earth and anything. Yeah. Any, anyone that's that naive in science, uh, pff, come on. I mean, there's 6 billion smartphones, high-speed internet, social networking. What did you think was going to happen with all that? Especially you know? with young people who That's all have cell phones and access to that computer when yeah. mom and dad are at work. Yeah. 
They're extremely pliable. They have instant access. We have tools. I thought it was my hair that was pliable, not you. Uh, I mean, seriously, <laughs> when it comes to information, we have the tools of the gods right now. Yes. And I mean, we have stuff that, you know, even if you went back 50 years, people think, oh my, what, what could you do with that sort of information? Young people used to, and maybe I'm sure they still do, when they're alone with their parents' computer or their own computer with no parent monitoring or other guardian, look at porn. Now right. they're looking at flat earth videos. I mean, what would you <laughs> I know, right? Like? Flat earth's new porn. It is. It's porn for the mind. It is. It is in a lot of ways. You're absolutely right. I mean, to the point where, come on, uh, uh, the big one of the biggest corporations in the world, Google, was addressing the flat earth problem with the United States government just a couple months ago. If we didn't matter, if we weren't on the right track, even if we don't quite know models, maps, blah, 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 and we have a lot of infighting, right. if we weren't all on the right track, every single one of us, even people who are in flat earth who hate my guts or yours, right. if we weren't all on the right track, why would Google mention us? Yeah. We'd be just some, you know, stupid conspiracy, just like, you know, brush that and, under the rug. Who cares? And if we weren't to thing, and, and this is to Jaron and Bob, because, you know, I, I, I just happened to kind of smile when I saw the article, even though I'm sure they were like cringing, was the Newsweek article. I the want New Newsweek to write about me being the worst, most dangerous woman in history of the world. Oh, I'll, I'll do you yeah, one I'll better. I would love it. I'd I love would, that. I would, would be proud. Pro I'd sell a finger. <laughs> <laughs> to, to have Time Magazine me have me on the front cover saying, is he the most dangerous man in the world to science? I mean, Jaron should not worry that people are saying he had a botched experiment and proved the globe. Yeah. People are coming to his channel now that never knew he existed. Same yeah. with me, same with everybody in the documentary. And that will spill over to everyone who wasn't in the documentary that's a flat earther. There is renewed interest. This has reinvigorated the community. Although on the surface, it looks pretty horrible. I mean, people yeah. are saying, oh, flat earth has been proven uh, a lie because you guys debunked yourself and behind the curve. <laughs> right. Yeah, whatever. Uh, just go start you know, chewing on a, on a hayseed, you idiot. That's Everybody gets happened. worked up when the enemy mobilizes. Yeah. And look, we were never, we, this is never going to be a cakewalk. Never, no. ever, ever. No. And so again, when Newsweek runs a story that basically says, spoiler alert, <laughs> you know, Netflix's new documentary proves, you know, proves the earth is round and then goes into great detail. I mean, with diagrams that they created on their own about how that experiment was supposed to go. I, you know, I, I, I feel bad for Jaron in a way, but at the same time, it's like, Hey, you know, you're, you're taking Since a hit. Then, you're taking a hit piece from Newsweek. Yeah, he's taking a hit for the team too. All of us yeah. who are in that thing are. We went into it with the best possible thought in mind for the community. And right. you, Mark, you and I have been open about every single step of the way. We even had Daniel Clark here on the show a couple times. Oh, yeah, he was in your yeah, absolutely. <laughs> As the thing progressed, yeah. And you know, I took him out to dinner. Uh, he stayed at Bob and Cami's house. He was hosted by Jaron and Missa. Um, we were very kind to the man. He was very kind as well back. And now people have said, why did you trust the mainstream media? This isn't the mainstream media. This is a tiny little company that had a $10,000 budget to put together a film. It's basically almost like high school kids saying, hey, let's put on a show. Oh, yeah, yeah. I mean, he maxed out credit cards. Right. So it's not mainstream media. Now, what they made afterwards is now on mainstream. Netflix. Right, right, right. And, and but this isn't it, like we got CBS to follow us around. I mean, no. you know it what defied, you can expect. It defied uh, all odds. And that is, you know, we, you know, we, we learned a lot about the film industry as we were going through this because, uh, like, for example, the Toronto Film Festival had three over 3,000 films submitted. Out of those 3,000 films, which are just like Daniel's, they only took 100. And out of those hundred, they only showcased a certain amount. And out of those, very few get picked up by production houses and or other film other film festivals. And then next thing you know, it had five, then 10, then 20. And it was going in, into multiple countries. And then all of a sudden, just this big wave pushed it along. And here we are now. Uh, it's a cool thing. People have asked as well, why did all of you who are in it sign off on it? Why did you agree to let it go after you saw what it was? Well, the truth is, made, if, it, if that's the case, we never saw the film before right. it was put out. We signed 
away our life and at the same time that we were first interviewed we Don't. didn't know the title of it we didn't know it would go on amazon prime we didn't know that it would go on itunes or right. on netflix we didn't even right. know it would go to film festivals Documentaries are different. From, oh, and we didn't get to see it before yeah, yeah. it was released. Documentaries are different from mainstream movies. Now, what they're probably thinking about is what what happens to A list actors. Right. You're absolutely right. If you're Angelina Jolie and Brad Pitt, and you're making Mr. and Mrs. Smith before the movie is released, you sit down with your lawyers and your agents and their lawyers and everybody else, and you sit in a big room and you watch the film and you take notes. More than that, you see the daily. So if yeah. you're someone and you watch the daily video that you just did, I'd say things like, mm, I misspoke there, or oh, kind of look fat in that. We need to reshoot these. That's why films take so long to make. And we didn't have that option. No, no. I mean, documentaries are completely different because you're not paying the people to do it. There's no contractual obligations. There is no contract. It's a one-page sign-off. Now, people That's have said, why, Patricia, are you and Mark listed as stars of it? Did we agree to that? Did we even know about it, Mark? Uh, I asked for top billing <laughs> on this above Patricia. I really uh, wanted my name above. So I wanted Mark Sargent behind the curve. They wouldn't do that. So, No. No, no, no. It's because they have to. You have to put somebody in it. it so it's, all documentaries list a star. Just yeah, yeah. You got to fill in the blanks, and that is right. like when you're ordering something online. You got to put it in an address, or it's not gonna. You know, it's not gonna go anywhere. You've got to list somebody that was in it, and I mean, come on. I was, I was the protagonist, now, and you were the female protagonist. Some would say because we're discussing this right now, we're doing damage control. We're just discussing it because the flat Earth community is discussing it. So, so it, yeah, it, they're discussing. Are you kidding? How many videos <laughs> have been made? If anyone has any questions, they can put it. You know, they could put. You know, they oh, can let, highlight my do, name and put a comment in let, there. Let's, let's do the miscellaneous stuff, and that mm -hmm. is, as you know, there were several montages during that film where other YouTubers that were doing flat Earth for for, for and against were shown. You know, very quickly. Uh, Dell, Nicole Cote, Star Guides. Who you know, like? Yeah, What's his name? I, I can't remember. I haven't heard of that guy. Whatever, th whatever that guy's name is. So, but, and yeah, you're in there. Okay, first off, you won't be able to do anything copyright wise. I mean, come on, Jimmy Kimmel, if Jimmy Kimmel can't do anything because it's fair use, you're not gonna be able to do anything fair use. Same thing with the ESPN. I mean, that is the very definition of fair use. Short little clips that are already on the internet. They are fair game, hence fair use. So, there's not they're not even do there but at the same time it was kind of cool that was one of the things that was fun for me and well you and i the first time we watched it seeing everybody you know yes, it, it was, it i was, was fooled when i was in uh canada and I, I went to the actual you know premiere of the film when i saw it for the first time i had no idea even who everybody was who all was in it i knew bob and jaron and i knew probably chris pontius and i knew of course you and i we didn't know and about I, nathan i didn't know about nathan thompson we didn't know about matt i didn't know about matt, matt. And I didn't know what they would do with all the material that we gave them. Uh, so when I watched it for the first time, I was like any of us who go to a movie in the theater for the first time. You know, yeah. you're there. I mean, I didn't have popcorn, but you're there with your popcorn. Like, oh, that's the opening. Oh, oh, Mark Sargent. Okay. Yeah. The, oh, Mark's mom. <laughs> She's so sweet. <laughs> oh, well, Nathan Thompson can. Whoa, Nathan's in this? Interesting. You know, eating more popcorn. Well, he can certainly juggle some hammers. Oh, wait, there's me. I uh, probably shouldn't have worn that shade of lipstick that day, but yeah, okay, okay. And that's how it was. And then like, oh my beep, Matt Powerland's in this thing. How yeah. did we not know? Oh, they filmed him right off YouTube. Can they get away with that? Oh, he's going to be mad. That's what I thought the first time I saw it. Yeah. I didn't know what was going to happen. And you thought the same thing. And at the very end, after watching it, you and I discussed, and we saw, you know, we saw it, and we discussed what we thought, and we thought it was a very nice portrayal of the community. But then I went to sleep that night and thought about it, and woke up and started feeling angry because I started thinking about little pieces, little bits, and started seeing the bigger picture, mm. thinking, they was that, was that the first time you saw it or the <laughs> second time you saw it? Well, the first time I saw it, I felt great at first, but then I started thinking about it and started seeing little issues. And then we saw it again, I think the next day in the theater. Yeah. And then it was then that I really saw all the little things. And and then you and I saw it together uh, via Skype a third time. Yeah. And 
then I was seeing all sorts of little ways that they ground us under their heel. And I'm sure there's, if I watched it a fourth time, I'd see even more little digs. Um, you, you know, the, the time when we had our meetup in LA and then they went over to a meetup that was going on in LA at the same time for space lovers. Right. Ever hear of a meeting for space lovers? Ever? No. Because people who love space or people who believe in the globe, they don't have meetups for that. That's I mean, called the, everybody in the world. The, the that was staged. The I timing believe. could have been set around it. I wasn't going to discount that. I mean, All come right. on. The, Ar the Arcadia yeah. meetup that we did. That was real. Well, but yes, it was. One, yeah, yes, think. it was. But it was scheduled around the teams that were coming. I think the space one might have even been organized because one oh, of the clerks asked, hey, you space people, the, can you get very, together and do a meetup at a bar? Very possible. We're filming. Very, very possible. That's so, fake. That's my, not realistic. Two. two Two quick things, and then I don't know how much more time you want to spend on this. Two two quick things. One, of course, my prediction from long ago, back in April after we first saw it, uh, is absolutely still true, which is, look, the community is going to have real problems with it, but the general globalists are going to have tons and tons of questions and going to generate a lot of interest, and it has. No question. I mean, literally, and I am not exaggerating, the because we're, what, a week after the Netflix release or whatever it is, my email load, which was already heavy to begin with, doubled. And it was like, really? I mean, with all new people, all new things. I mean, I've got, we'll list off some of the interviews I'm doing this week. It was crazy. Uh, but the other thing was, in the end, this will, because I got to see it in a lot of different places with globalists. In the end, it will generate, so it will plant so many seeds uh, you know, that we will be able to reap a lot of stuff from it. I'm going to say something that some may say, oh, this is why you went and did the video, Patricia. You like that? <laughs> I've received, and it's not, because I didn't know what the outcome would be. I never thought about what uh, what the fallout would be by doing behind the curve. I just right. did it because I thought, hey, it's a way to portray flat earthers other than, other than as the mainstream thinks is dumb tinfoil hat wearers. Mm -hmm. So I said, okay, sure, you can follow me around in my daily activities. Oh, sure. Um, I've received a huge amount of subscribers since yes. this film came out. Now, are they all, you know, the term hate watching, when you hate someone so much, you're gonna watch them. Are they all globe believers who hate Flat Earth so much? Is that it? Is that why they subscribed? Maybe, huh? A thousand subscribers in the past 30 days, which was kind of a little bit of Amazon Prime, kind of a little bit of iTunes, and then definitely Netflix people. Is that right. it? A lot of new watches on my videos. And I'm just saying me, but I know this has happened with every person who's involved in the documentary. Right. We've noticed this influx of people, and I've noticed an influx of emails. And these are people saying either, I never knew Flat Earth was a thing. Can you explain Jaren's, um, they use the word experiment. It's more like a demonstration, but yeah, well, okay, technically. But can you, what happened, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Right. New people have come on board. New people have been alerted. It's like this to the world when they see this. Flat Earth is here. We've essentially reached through their television screens and grabbed them by the shoulders and shook the hell out of them. Flat Earth is here. You might think we're crazy, but we seem pretty damn normal, don't we? Because we do part. in yeah. this film, all sorts of different kinds of people from different parts of the world, different skin colors, different ages, different sexes. We're here. We're not going anywhere. This thing, in the end, is going to be a catalyst for people to look into Flat Earth. Not something that makes them say, oh, oh yeah, Jaren saw the curve. Oh, well, Flat Earth's stupid. We live on a globe. Move on. No. People who might think that are still going to look into it. And it's some true. of those people are going to wind up right here as Flat Earthers because it's the truth. Very well said. Excellent. And, and, and it's very true, by the way, uh, I've gotten like, for example, let's, let's, let's go over some of the things I'm going to be, uh, a thing. How likely are you to recommend the internet Explorer web browser to a friend? Really? You're going to ask me that right now. Is that what's happening? <laughs> yeah. It's a little thing on the side of my screen. Really? Got to help. All right. So, uh, <laughs>
a couple of things like and, and this is you know what this is this is for the, this i'm going to call this for uh whatever his name is at ephemeral rift stay away from the children okay i'm going to stay away from the children for about another 24 hours and then tomorrow i am doing a video interview with a high school in perth australia uh followed in the afternoon by uh someone i hadn't heard about apparently a pretty big podcaster out of new york city named samantha scarlet i don't think that's a real name i doubt it i doubt it oh <laughs> really. uh, if, if you see her you see that and then you see her her pics yeah i don't think it's real she have red hair no so, i don't think it's blonde either okay. I, but whatever i think she's great whatever she'll be cool and then Friday, a new podcast. I'm not going to name because I don't want I don't want to jinx it. I'm not going to have. Uh, I'm also not listing you know the people involved because I don't want trolls to call them up and and because that has happened to me. But by oh, the way, yes, don't said, hey, talk to so and so. I hear you're scheduled, but that person's a shill. Right, he cannot be trusted. By the way, what are you wearing right now? You're wearing something green. I don't I don't often see that. What what what? Do we I am have wearing a here? green off the shoulder cotton sweater. Wow. Very and nice. I was thinking as I put it on, maybe you should save this for St. Patrick's Day. And then I thought, eh, I love green. It's being worn right now. This thing's yeah. getting worn. <laughs> yep. Thanks for the Let, compliment. Let's let's no, let's face it, folks. You could wear a potato sack and you know what? I need to find my mom used to tell me, my mom's dad, but she used to be very nice about compliments. She and I loved style and fashion. And uh, she said to me, you know, you could wear a garbage bag and make it look good. <laughs> Maybe our next show, I'll wear a garbage bag. If anybody wants to wear an actual garbage bag for the next show, Absol put a I'm one in the chat box. I, I think there was a thing on Gilligan's Island where Ginger Grant like mm -hmm. was, had to like makeshift something out of like one of the sails or something, something off the boat. And it was, oh, yeah. You know, Probably look like haute couture on her um, like, modeling mm -hmm. material on her. <laughs> Next week, I'm going to do another high school. This one, I'll list the high school because you're never going to figure out who the kids are. That's Chief Self High School in Seattle, Washington. I'm going to be doing that one. In fact, they may actually come up to the island for a video interview. And I said, hey, come on up. Hang out with some flat earthers so I can infect you with all my flat earth, <laughs> whatever it is I got, my flat earth cooties. And then after that, I am doing the uh, Calvary University which I think I forwarded. You actually may be doing that one too. That is a, uh, a Christian university. Oh, that's right. I haven't emailed them back yet. You haven't emailed them back it's yet? It's weird how people email you and I and ask for stuff. I guess we do stuff together. Uh, you probably hear that on the email shows if you listen to my stuff because I don't even know until I read dear it. Dear Patricia like, oh, and Mark. They write you. Mark. They write me, Dear Patricia and Mark. And I'm always thinking to myself, this is Mark's channel. <laughs> <laughs> oh, and I do the same thing. Password to my channel. You're the only one who does. Oh, wait. I, I think Nathan Oakley does too. I get all bitter because, you know, I used to get those about Matt and now I'm getting them about you. So whenever I see it, it's like, Mark, I'm just like, whatever. Patricia's not available right right you now, say, Mark, you're kind of okay, but we need to get a hold of Patricia. Do you know how we can get a hold of her? <laughs> oh, bite me. All right. So <laughs> the day will come. <laughs> <laughs> so. You'll rue the day. Okay, mm. let's talk real quick about what else did you have on your list? Because I wanted to talk real quick about something that you and I are both going to be attending. Um, I just want to say hello and thanks to Joe Garcia. Oh, uh, right, right, right. Question, everything, the new, the, the new, the uh, first time he's ever done a, a conference and it was yeah. held in the Los Angeles area and it was wonderful. And you, uh, you and I went and many other flat earthers. I could name them all, but it'll, I forget people because I've had a little tiny bit to drink, but Paul in a plane and Robbie yeah. Davidson and so many uh, Matt, Matt Long Matt Long was there Jessica Long the Longs because the Longs there were there um, uh yeah it was it was a lot of fun mm -hmm. you you and I got to do a lot of fun things uh enjoyed the we food did something enjoyed the really cool should we mention but kind of not mention mention oh you mean our little side one of okay our, so one of, wait, which, about... which side right the, the one where we went downtown to okay there, well we'll talk about that that's more open that we can talk about, Let's talk about there's that. this uh closet flat earther we've talked about that's well known that we can't mention the person's name because they're well known and they are not ready to come out yet. No. Thinking about doing a project, and we don't actually know who will be involved in said project, but it will be a mainstream project. But yet, everything about what goes into it would be the decision of the flat earthers, not right. like behind the curve. Right. And it, and it would it would make behind the curve seem tiny by comparison we'd crush them under our heel yeah it would be if it happens it might not if happen it happens. 
we always tell you everything that's going to happen, but this is a very high powered person in Hollywood. Yeah. And they are a flat earther. They're not, they don't even need to make money, you know, at all anymore. Nope. They have several homes in different countries and they want to do something for the community without actually coming out and saying, Hey, I'm a flat earther. Right. And this might be something that they might do. They might not. We'll let you know now, if it I doesn't get, work. I, I warned them as best I could. I warned the producer that we spoke with and mm -hmm. said, look, this is no joke. You can't just go into it like Kyrie Irving did. 25 year olds, guys, championship ring, got LeBron next to him. It's like, <laughs> what's the worst that could happen? I'm a Man. flat earther. Yeah. Yeah. You got to got to weigh your options. And right. uh, so we'll see. I'm, I'm hoping, you know, but at the same time, my expectations for behind the curve, although let, let's face it. Um, and I'll tell you, cause it's just us too, right? We're just talking. Here. Just you and I, no one else is listening or watching. no one else listening, which In is fact, I, really, I mean, I might as well adjust my shirt. No one's. I knew me. killing me. I'm single. <laughs> the, um, <laughs> seriously, it's, it's difficult. Teasing anyone. It's seriously, anyone that has to spend time with Patricia, like face to face, it is difficult if you're single oh by the way the vote is in i will be wearing a garbage bag on the next show <laughs> next wednesday i don't know how i'm going to pull that off but i will be doing it I someone says make sure it's it. green so green or black i don't know whatever i, I still think about your maleficent switcheroo <laughs> where i thought you were going to be the little mermaid that was brilliant that was really brilliant because i'm going surprised. oh yeah she could totally do the little mermaid. And I thought it was pretty sad because I'm dressed as Maleficent. It's close to Halloween. And we planned already to have the guest, which is Robbie Davidson on of Celebrate Truth. And Robbie yeah. and his family don't celebrate Halloween because a lot of Christians believe it's a satanic holiday. And for me, I know all the dirty, nasty stuff about all these satanic slash negative evil holidays and how they came to be. But I grew up celebrating Halloween and have a very wonderful series of memories with my family and my mom and the costumes and the fun and the trick-or-treating. So I wore a Maleficent costume and then Robbie didn't really know. And then he pops up on screen with you and I, and I'm in this sort of AKA devil costume, even if it's right. Maleficent and Robbie maintained composure, which was, I was pretty impressive. <laughs> Me too. I, I sold my children, so I don't celebrate Halloween anymore, right. you know, but it happens. Hey, look, the money was there. You get double if their eyes stay blue. Anyway. So, all uh, I can say is, with this? So the, please no one take that and make a video with it. So the comments, Ivory Coast, look it up. So um, I do not condone many of the things. <laughs> the the opinions expressed oh by my gosh, Sargent. who pops in the live chat right now? But Robbie D of Self. <laughs> <laughs> oh gosh, hi Robbie. We were just hey, talking just asked about him. you. He sent it. I asked him for the uh, that shot. I just remembered it uh, a couple hours ago. The shot of you strangling me. In oh, yeah, the, yeah. Uh, in the chair. Robbie is making a new production. He's in the midst of filming it. What is he keeping it's, that? He's going to put it out soon and he's well, going no. to probably use that shot. I, oh, it, was a, it was a behind the scenes blooper shot where I pretended to strangle Mark. And I know many of you out there wish I yeah, pretended Whatever. next time. Uh, okay. So anyway, the QE conference was great. A lot of fun. Uh, great, great to see everybody. And Joe Garcia and did a great job with the first conference. Oh my gosh. Yeah, How hard would that be to put together? He did great. Yeah, it was, it was awesome. And I got to, uh, I thought the panel at the end was, was interesting because, oh, I didn't even tell you this. So I was sitting with, uh, Chad and he, the guy that was next to me on the end. And he, uh, he and I were sitting like, you know, here and here. And we get to the airport and I'll be darned, here he was sitting across from me. He was he was next to the food court and he's like, hey man. And then he said, oh, I gotta get on the plane. And uh, and I and I go, you don't have to get on now, do you? I go, I go, I'm at the back of the plane. He goes, hey, so am I. I go, really, what's your seat number? He goes, 31A. I go, I'm 31C. Who was in 33 though, is what I wanna know. <laughs> Oh yeah, good point. That was that was actually the last row. It was two right. rows behind us. But anyway, a lot of fun, and I was, you know, oh, I'm sorry. There's a couple things. Sorry. I was in seat two on my way out from Houston. Really, to the LA really? airport. Okay, seat two, and I picked my own seats when I bought my own ticket, and I was kind of upset because my seat wouldn't recline. You know, every once in a while you get that bad seat on the plane that doesn't recline or whatever, mm -hmm. and I was annoyed. I had a window seat, just what I wanted, but it wouldn't go back, and it's only a three hour flight, no big deal. But I still wanted to like kick back and relax. And then I thought, okay, fine, whatever. I forgot that I'd bought seat two on the way back, but it's the same plane. And I went to recline my seat and it wouldn't go back. And I was mad. You literally had the same plane to go back? Same plane, same seat two. 
<laughs> when yeah, you're the, chat, the chat room, you know, they're doing the math right now. They're going, wait, seat two. Yeah, do not feel bad for anybody in seat two chat room and do not give Patricia any sympathy whatsoever. <laughs> Plus, you're so tiny. Oh, my God. It'd be like being on a freaking love seat if you were in, in that. Whatever. You know what I've noticed that in behind the curve, I weighed more than I do now. My weight fluctuates by 10 pounds just randomly. It just does. I don't even know why. And mm. I'm like, when I watched behind the curve, I thought, man, you're on your heavier side now, girl. Ten, ten, pound, <laughs> 10 pounds. And Jaren's lost a lot of weight since behind the curve. And so has Bob, not because of the film, but they have. So congrats to Jaren and congrats to Bob and me as well. Even Good. if I wasn't we even just, trying to we lose just weight. Felt for the television appearances. Well, you know what they say that you, the TV puts on 10 pounds. I think it actually really does. That's depends why when what people lunch, meet yeah. celebs, they're like, they're so small. So uh, a couple couple quick things. Uh, one, when we went down to, uh, we were at the conference, we got to do a couple mm -hmm. side projects. Yes. One of the, the big day, oh, that was a long day. In fact, the it conference, was a hadn't long even, day. conference hadn't even started yet. It was yes. the day before the conference and we got a chance to go down. There was two interviews that, that uh, we were doing down. To, down that was up. a weird day. That was a weird day. And an we got interesting to day. Anyway, you tell it. I'll just okay. sit and drink and listen. So we went down to, uh, there's a podcast. Well, it's on YouTube, YouTube channel called The Fallen State. And they shoot live down in Los Angeles. You know, they don't do podcasts or anything like that. They shoot live in a, in a studio down there at what's known as Bond Studios. It's on Pico Boulevard. You can look it up if you want. And so Patricia and I and Robbie went down there. And, uh, you know, Robbie was shooting B-roll for his project and, and I hadn't ever been down there. And we get to meet, I can't remember, the guy's name was Jesse, uh, black guy, didn't, I can't remember. And the only name. reason you're saying black guy, because I don't identify people by race generally, was right when this whole thing started, he looked into the audience and was this guy named Jesse was looking into the audience. No one was talking about race or thinking about race. He starts pointing out that guy's is black over there. And that guy over there is black. That guy over there is half black. And I was that guy there is almost white. <laughs> I was in the audience thinking, wow, just imagine at a Flat Earth conference or convention if we started naming races. How right. weird was that? And that was the start of this thing. Yeah. Imagine but, how the rest of it went. Uh, yeah. And then on, on top of that, they actually found an astrophysicist named Jeff Zwerlink. Nice guy. Nice guy. Nice guy. Yeah. He's very white. Innocent, wow. you know, doesn't know much except for what he learned in school. Super strong Christian, though, mm -hmm. kind of oh, a conflicted yes. man already. C strong yes. Christian and an astrophysicist, so he is not loved in his own community. Yeah, that's a bit different. Yeah, but was willing to come on and talk about it. So it was a weird mix of science questions and religious comparisons about you know how the world works both biblically and from a cosmological standpoint. I told him after the whole thing was over, which you're about to talk about, that you know, Flat Earth and you are on the same page. We both don't believe in evolution. Right. And he was like, oh, whoa, interesting. Anyway. Yeah. He even he even did a video on YouTube against Bill Nye uh, right. some time ago. Because you know Bill Nye and, you know so now I was treating him kind of like the enemy of my enemy is my friend. All right. And the, and it, I thought he was a good guy. I actually liked the dialogue between the two of us. And we were just going back and forth. And the moderator, uh, Jesse, was reading off his pad, was just kind of, you know, he was out of his element, definitely. Jesse was just thinking, what the heck's going on here? Yeah. I well, want to talk about race. <laughs> yeah, yeah. He wanted to get into political issues. No one else I, cared. I, Everyone I, else thought uh, we're all equal and we all love each other yeah his two standard questions which he asked everybody one is uh do you love the great white hope he asked that question yeah of which you I and the astrophysicist do you love the great white hope right and i, I honestly because i've never voted in my life nor have ever heard donald trump being called the great white hope didn't know what he meant i didn't either as an audience a, member yeah and and so he had to specify and i said no and then uh jeff said yes but the other one the only question that threw i thought me, it was a movie the great white hope and i'm like why it, is he asking it was about a movie? movie absolutely it was a movie with uh samuel L. jackson and jeff goldblum and uh one of the wayans brothers and there's all sorts of people in that movie it was a, it was an all-star cast and it was about the myth of of, of of any white boxers being any good and they're not so white men can't jump so white men can't jump and they also can't box and they're not very good dancers we could go on and on <laughs> so, uh so then but the only question that threw me out of all of them uh was what is a man yeah he asked what is a man what is a man and i knew where he was going with this but i didn't i didn't 
I would but, say if I were up there, not a woman. Why are you but, asking me this question? It has well, nothing to do with the that, debate about flat Earth. It's what a tough. It? It's a tough question. If you ask anybody, what's a man? What is a man? And that's literally, you know, what isn't four letters? That's four letters, four words. That's all he had. Mm. You, you know, I'm thinking, okay. I can't, well, because it's 2019. It's like, okay, I'm not going to answer this in a way that will appeal to males because it's too cliche, which was, right. you know, men are strength, men are brawn. You know, <laughs> how, how many how many real men does it take to screw in a light bulb? None. Real men, men aren't afraid they, of the dark. Men chop down trees with Chuck their bare Norris, hands. That's a man. <laughs> you know, I, you know I, I chew iron, I spit out nails. <laughs> That 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 whole thing, and so I just said that that a man is part of a two person uh, team, I like know, a man it. and a woman that 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 help move this world forward. I that's, love that, your answer. Well, I, I, it was weird. I have never gotten ever gotten a question like that in yeah, my life under any debate. circumstances. It's like it was so generic, <laughs> but it can be interpreted so many ways. I'm going, and it was like that was towards the end of the interview. And like, oh. he said, Jesse, the guy who was the moderator, said he asked everybody who comes on his uh, on his channel or you know in his interview sphere. Oh, I said sphere. Yeah. Um, in his interview presence, those questions. Right. So, so the other thing we did after that ended, that was only like an hour, but it was fun. It was it was a cool little uh, sound stage, and and it was interesting. I mean, yes, watching everybody do it, and and uh, and everyone was nice and cool. Yeah, full full production, and I got a chance to talk to Jeff, and I don't think he wanted to talk to me afterwards because I was blowing his mind, <laughs> and because I was, because it, it was yes. I really want to get into the biblical stuff, which was look in the flat model, flat enclosed model, the two big stories which do not, you know, that work absolutely better in you know do not work in a globe and work in a flat model. One is the story of Joshua, where he holds the sun and the moon uh, uh, an extra day to slay more enemies, and of course the Tower of Babel. Tower of Babel doesn't go anywhere in a globe model, but it goes absolutely one place in a flat model. And then after that, we went to a restaurant, not even a block away, uh, called Dick's, if I'm not mistaken. And it was really straight up an American diner. Yeah, American diner with cliche Calif Los Angeles American diner with wall-to-wall pics of Hollywood celebrities signed a sol you know, signed yes. pics on the wall. Frame. And um, it smelled like fried food which yep. lingered with me throughout the day it was in my hair and i'm like oh gross. they only serve breakfast and lunch yeah a lot of burgers a lot of a lot of eggs and toast and, and they had vegan food the, the owners were vegan and so they oh. had some vegan stuff which was totally a crazy That's cool, cool. Mm. you're like whatever oh, we i'm like yes <laughs> so we were there for three hours uh, cause we had, we had time to kill because we were on completely the other side of town and you and I had a dinner thing we had to go to later. And then Robbie, unfortunately had to catch an Uber ride during rush hour on the yeah. way home. And I think it took him like an hour to get back to the question. Uh, it, probably more than that. Right. Long ride. And it was a much shorter time frame of a trip. Yeah. Uh, so we, we sat with another, a little documentary team that, uh, they actually run a photography studio, like a lot of people in LA, you know, it's the, everyone's trying to break into something and they all have their day jobs. And these guys were like, Oh yeah, flat earth, you know? So they were, in fact, most, I think all of it was audio. They weren't even shooting video. Yeah. It audio was, only. It we was sat all at this, audio only. Like corner booth in like this old school diner smelling yeah. like fried food, kind of like poking at our toast. And I was eating my vegan chili and fruit and, yep. and we were just chatting and they had a boom mic, no, no video, yeah. just asking us questions about flat earth. Yeah. The five of us for basically three hours and yeah. they, they couldn't have been more stoked because by the end, uh, go figure, you know, we're, we're leaving and we're kind of walking around figuring how we're going to get to our dinner date, which is mm -hmm. on Melrose. And one of the guys driving by and sees us and picks us up and takes us to UCLA campus, which was probably not the best move ever because what we, <laughs> what we did not know was that Uber doesn't like pick Uber when it has to pick up on a campus, picks up at certain buildings, right? You don't just show up anywhere on campus. You have to be at certain spots. And if you don't go to UCLA, you don't know where the I have no idea where we're. building is. We're <laughs> just like, going, la, 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 la. We had no idea. And where. I'm wearing four inch high, you know, boots. And that's not that great for like doing some serious walking. In fact, the thumbnail for this video is taken on the UCLA campus as you and I were walking around. Yeah. I mean, I'm on my phone, like trying to get a hold of the Uber and I'm like, Mark, take a picture of me. So 
You did. And so we end up, we end up, <laughs> funny, we ended up camping out. By the way, I wish the... everyone is all, were always with us for these things. Yeah. Because they're just, just don't, so you just don't fun. Know. You just don't know what's going to happen. Our adventures are so different than other people's <laughs> adventures. So then, so the first Uber bailed on us because they couldn't find us. The second one, we said, okay, we're going to be. And they charged week. me. Yeah. Darn it. <laughs> the the second building we stopped at was the uh, Behavioral Science for Children Research Center. Yeah, and I think it's for children who have mental issues because as we walked toward it and thought, oh, okay, God. this is an address, there was this pounding noise on the wall and like some kind of screaming so noise. noise. It was like caged zombies inside really there that were like trying that. to get out. Yeah. Even though you, you know they were only three feet high, it felt like if you went in there, your life would be in danger. It'd be over. <laughs> and so anyway, we got, we we drove to a, a restaurant which was called Crossroads Cross on Melrose, a beautiful vegan restaurant. Beautiful vegan restaurant. It was great. And you had you've had vegan food with me before. Yes, it was probably the top of the line from what you and I've been to before, right? Very top of the line vegan food. Really and lovely. That's where we um, met some people. The secret flat earther. Secret flat earther, mm -hmm. and uh, and but more importantly, there was somebody new there, which mm -hmm. was um, a producer that right. wanted to talk about possible right. projects, and we can't that really flat earth would have control of that would Not flat earth yeah behind the curve. We've yeah. learned our lesson. Yeah. So. I mean, you can't blame anyone for making mistakes, and no. in fact, in the end, behind the curve even if I don't like how they portrayed us, will, as Flat Earth legend goes, in the end not be a mistake no. because of all the new people who are looking into it right now. I shouldn't say that the end justifies the means because that's not always true, mm -hmm. but often it does. You know, how, you know the, the route to get there, you know, if you get there. Everyone who's worried, it'll be okay. It'll be fine. I'd hug you if you were here. Imagine I'm hugging you, patting you on the back. It's going to be okay. Just because Newsweek is saying bad stuff about Jaren and saying the experiment proved flat earth and behind the curve, it's not true. We know right. it's true. Flat earth is still growing. And right. This is going to make it grow even bigger. Step back, take a breath, chill out. It's cool. So, segue to because that we left Los Angeles. It was great. Great. You enjoyed the entire time. Uh, got, to, got to meet so many great people. Uh, shout out to uh, the Canadian people that flew. I, I love the people that come in from long distances for these things. And we had people, again, you would think it would be mostly a Southern California thing. It was not. There were people that came in from all over, which was which was fantastic. Uh, but the next one we're going to. Dun, 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 New Zealand. Oh, yeah. New Zealand. I've never been to New Zealand. I'm so excited. Have I. New Zealand. And. Um, yeah. I'm o I am only going, I will give credit where credit is due. It's not like I was asked, like, oh, Mark, yeah, I'm coming to New Zealand and speak. No, I am going, I'm a substitute. The uh, the person that was supposed to be there for this was Rob Skiba. You're he plan B, basically. I am you. plan B, which is, you know, that's actually not bad. That's a t-shirt. Oh, my God, that is a t-shirt, plan B. <laughs> Just plan, plan and then a giant B below. That is a great <laughs> shirt to, like, wear in a bar. It's like, I'm going to be with plan B. Oh, is, really, is that your plan? No, he's wearing a shirt that says plan B. So... Um, I like the cute guy at the bar. I love to meet him, but he's got a girl. I'm going to go with that other guy, the dork with the hat. Plan B. Ooh. I didn't mean you, of course. Oh, oh, <laughs> that, that hurts me. This hurts me here yeah, and right. here. It does. Yeah. All right. So we are going to the New Zealand conference. You guys can look it up and I'll give you the address. Well, real by quick. the way, that is an abortion drug, according to Kick Westbury. I am anti-abortion 100% and I'm not promoting abortion by saying plan B, but before it became an abortion drug, it was a normal uh, uh, turn of phrase. Plan I B. never knew that. Yeah. Really? Let me darn. All right. So the New Zealand conference is, you can check it out at fenzexpo.co.nz. And I'm looking up the website right now. And it is Auckland, New Zealand, April 26th through 28th, 2019. Jam-packed, two-day, three-part event to showcase Flat Earth as a science and related topics such as, and we won't read off the topics. So go to the website when you get a chance. It's a lot going to be a lot of fun. I, I, In fact, I just noticed Flat Earth Man is going to be perform performing there. That's cool. Um, shout out to Adrienne Morrison, um, 
who's putting the thing together for the most part, along with others. And they're doing a promo soon. You'll see it on YouTube. Uh, they're hitting the streets every Saturday with a poster billboard being printed in the next couple of days to promote the event. And uh, they're, they've got, they've got it all together. This is a big undertaking like Joe Garcia from Question Everything. It's hard to do. I mean, it's hard for you and I to get together to do a secret show, like timing and setting stuff up. Just imagine Waiting Rob Davidson you. or, or um, DD or Gary John or any of the people who are putting together stuff. It's not easy. It's not easy at all. It's not. So anyway, that's going to be a lot of fun. I'm really excited about that. And since I have you, Oh, you, do you? I, I'm going to kill two birds with one stone here. Well, no, right. I don't have. By the way, when I was in New Orleans, I lived there for a short period of time. And I met this guy who was not even plan B. He was plan F. And I would never go that far down the line. But anyway, um, he told me, he was telling me some story. And he said, he to kill, a, to kill a bird with a stone. That was the way he said the expression. To kill a bird with a stone. I, I don't know. What, what would you rather say? Kill an eggplant with a Well, break? let's kill two birds with a stone. That one makes oh, sense. You mean he, oh, you mean he was he screwing got up. got it wrong. He was screwing up the same. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Like seven with one blow. <laughs> I was just like. One stone. In fact, I got to look that up because. I'm just I shaking my head. I'm like, yeah, okay. Plus, being a vegan, you don't talk about killing animals. But still. I don't think you can kill two birds with one stone unless it's a really big stone and they're on the ground. Well, if you do that and you're into killing birds, it's actually a win-win. So like if you walked up on top of them with a boulder and yeah. then wham, you know, then you could kill a whole bunch of birds. Let's not talk about killing any okay. birds. Okay. So all right, I want to I want to <laughs> Wait, I brought it up. Sorry. <laughs> I want here's what I want to do real quick with you because I've got you on and this way I can use production value. Steven Spielberg, always <laughs> maximize production value. Right. All right. Which is right. I've been asked because as you know, uh, there's other conferences, not just New Zealand, but later there's gonna be one in London. And one in Amsterdam. I can't wait to go to Amsterdam because I get to hug Martin Leakey again. Yay! <laughs> I don't. I don't know if I get to hug him. Well, he's not really that type of guy. But he I, might I, let you hug him. I like him in a certain way, and I don't know if he reciprocates. <laughs> so, Martin, if you're you listening, send a note to one of your friends, and they'll pass it along. <laughs> don't ask. Don't tell. By the way, subscribe to Martin Leakey's channel because he's in so, the live chat. So and, and say because so we're doing the London ones first, and then which is being done by Roxanne Glenn, uh, and then the Amsterdam one, which is being done by Gary, and then we're circling back around, and the end of the year will be done. I know we're talking about it. It's only I've February. Never been to Amsterdam, except for as a layover in an airport. It's a nice airport. Well, I have not been officially invited to Amsterdam yet. Just so you know. Oh. I know. I'll probably get in as a substitute. But that's fine. As a plan F? <laughs> yeah, plan F. It's like, okay, who's dropping out? Well, Mark's available. <laughs> yeah, Great. you know, he's Basically, not doing self -esteem anything. Self-esteem here, now here. How do you spell his name again? <laughs> B-O-Y-L-A-N. That's how you spell it. With you, without you. With, <laughs> with me, without me. With me, without me. Okay, so I, I want to do, because it, it's, so I'm, I'm going to maximize the production value here, mm. and I'm going to edit this part, because uh, they want me to record a little paragraph here for the UK conference. You ready? Oh, cool. Yes. So I'm going to do, I'm going to rehearse, and if I screw All it right, up, I'll be Here we go, there. everyone. Quiet. Okay. Pay attention. Uh, shut up. Shut up. Shut up. Hi. Wait, sorry to interrupt. Oh, Damn it. Joking. <laughs> <laughs> All right, I'll be quiet. Oh, you're going to be my director? Ready? Go. Have more feeling. Okay. Hi. This Use is the Mark's method acting that we've taught you. <laughs> Feel the pain. This Cry is Mark Sargent. Years. Think and about I'm the very worst excited thing that happened to you in your childhood. That I will Go. be speaking. You're killing me. Seriously, you're killing me. Sorry. That I will be speaking at the Globe Lie UK Convention 20. I should do it like plastic. 2019 at the Pioneer Center. Kid and Mr. Oh, Mir so boring. I'm going to fall. <laughs> Near Birmingham between September 13th and 15th. This event will mark uh, uh, the end of the UK leg of the Globe Lie Pan European Tour before, before it continues right across the continent in a 39 country, 64 stop, 14,200 mile epic Sunday, Sunday, Sunday <laughs> activism event. Please do not monster trucks. Please do not miss this opportunity to meet the speakers, activists, and fellow globe. Who wrote this? Fellow globe <laughs> deniers at the biggest event across the plane this year. Mm. For more information on tickets, please go to really. You put www. Does anyone even say that anymore? 
feconvention.com, and I look forward to seeing you in September. Stay flat. I like it. Yeah, it works. Exciting. How's that? <laughs> so we've got uh, we've got a conference in Dallas coming up too. Let's let us not forget. And a lot of people were asking about the Flat Earth Cruise that's coming up in 2020. 2020. Yeah. Um, make, make I want to thank David Gordon for giving $20 super chat, which will be given to someone else that rolling ready. Rick Hummer will be at Goose Town Tanver, Goose Town Tavern in Denver, the sixth. And oh, I need to scroll up because I stumbled yeah, over I a just, word. I just couldn't swing it. I was, I was thinking about going down to that, but, uh, I just, I that's because you use your money to buy that really expensive coin link in the description box. Oh yeah, exactly. I basically paid it that that would have paid for it there. That's an All airfare. Right. That's a coach ticket Can right you, there. Somehow, oh, there it is. But it's not just, remember, it's not just a coin. I am actually going to be It's using, an investment. No, 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 no. Look, no, I'm it's not. It's a weapon. Up, I'm not hyping up PowerCoin. What I'm saying is, is that I'm, the only reason I got it is because I am absolutely using it in interviews. Oh, yeah, of course. It's you, like, it's look, great. look, shiny. You know, I can, and, and it's quality made. So that way I can hand it to whoever it is and not feel bad. It's like, okay, don't, don't, don't tip it. it over. Don't break it. Because it's indestructible, as far as I can tell. All right, so David Gordon gave a twenty dollars super chat, which I'll give to others, and um, it's uh, at Goose. Take off your top. Or, Is that what he said? He keeps falling. Um, <laughs> Denver, um, March sixth of twenty nineteen. That's Wednesday. At um, meet up with Bob, Cami, and other flat Earth luminaries. He calls them. I like the word luminaries. Six to nine p.m. with anti space karaoke to follow. Anti space karaoke. That's cool. I like it. Oh, I forgot. There was mm -hmm. something else I was supposed to mention. You know okay. what I forgot to mention? Mm -hmm. uh, out of all, you know, uh, on top of all the cool things, and by the way, really excited about the young people reaching out to me for flat earth information. I am absolutely saying yes to every single one of them. I mean, uh, supposedly you're speaking at a, a, a commencement speech, right? Oh, that whole thing? <laughs> yeah, there's a university in India. And this is after Behind the Curve came out. This is after Behind the Curve came out. Uh, in fact, just very, very recently, uh, there was a liberal arts college in Indiana that wants me to do the commencement address <laughs> at their graduation. How are you going to pull that off? Because I don't even understand. Do the people who went there all, are they all flat? Are I do, well, that's just it. And and look, I appreciate, and I'll still, don't get me wrong, I will do it if, if they can pull this thing off. But I'm going to let them know. It's like, look, the administration has to know who I am. You cannot blindside people. I'm not going to get up there and like 10 minutes later, all of a sudden I see guys moving up to the left and right of the stage of me with giant wooden hooks. You know, it's like, get them off, you know, and like gagging me. And Those like, are metal hooks okay. and they're, they're tipped with human feces. Yeah, it so. would not, it would not be pleasant, but I absolutely could do a commit. I can write a speech. I can. I, 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 and you can deliver a speech. I can. I, I, I'm, I'm not going to shy away from that. And I all of us in Flat Earth can critique that speech. Exactly. And make videos I can, about you I being a shill. If I had an army, I could inspire them to charge that hill. If yeah, I, if I had to, exactly. I could. You won't do it, but. No. <laughs> You'll be like, go, 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 go. No, I, I oh, come on. Like, I wouldn't. I know. <laughs> like, John, like John, sometimes it turns out like John Belushi in Animal House. It's like, let's go. And he runs out the room and nobody follows him. Okay. So, okay. What I want to mention was on top of all these other groups that contacted me recently, mm -hmm. a band, a rock band out of England called Fabric, F A B R I K. They contacted me, and apparently one of the band members listens to Strange World on a, on a, a regular episode, nice. uh, on a regular basis, and he said, hey, I'd be really honored if you would use one of our songs just for one episode as to like play an outro, you know, like like end of the show or something like that. And I, you know, I went through their catalog, and and the um, uh, they had a song in their catalog, their last album called White Star. And I thought it was really cool. I mean, if the song he sent me, I, I didn't like as much. And but I listened to some of the other stuff on YouTube and I saw I listened to White Star and I'm going, you know what? That's a pretty catchy jingle. It's kind of a rocky, melancholy. I, I you know, I like sort of I like songs that will drive forward emotions a little bit. And it had a neat segment at the end, which I, I just I I call it music magic, where it's like it, it, if it touches me, it's like, yeah, I, I really like this. So instead of doing it for Strange World, I attached it to my latest uh license plate, car license plate compilation. And I, I played the whole song. And sent it to him, and and he seemed really excited about it. He goes, "Oh wow, this is so cool!" And I go, "That's great. I'm 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 glad." So look so for the music I, of Fabric. F A B R I K. F A B R I K. Out Sounds of like a fabric store. 
Uh, lead singer is a woman, uh, and, uh, and they she have likes video. fabric because she likes clothes. I, I don't know where where the the origin of that name. That came was from. So, sort of sexist for me to assume women like clothes. Sorry, I take it back. But what was what was interesting to me, and I, I'll I'll end it with this, which is when I was listening to White Star, even before I got to the end, I knew I was going to pick it anyway. But the last forty five seconds of the song, they you can hear Apollo Moon uh, audio clips playing over the rock music where you know they're talking to houston that little knee knee you know back and forth exactly and i was going right on that, delay, and I think, that makes absolutely no sense in reality yeah so that was i was going yeah i, I there's there's your synchronicity right there it's like so anyway uh, if you're wondering why i chose the song i did and why because i don't often you know credit uh the the artists in the title uh in this case they asked me they you know unsolicited they just came to me and said hey love for you to play one of our songs like, you bet. You I want to well. give um, some credit to Karen B, who she who did a wonderful um, uh, follow up to the Behind the Curve documentary, talking about what Bob and Jaren really did and what they really said, and it's on her channel, Karen B. And I suggest everyone go subscribe. Uh, it's called Bob and Jaren's Response to BTC Behind the Curve documentary, and it broke down exactly what happened as opposed to hearing other people say what they thought happened or as opposed to hearing other people lie about what happened right so go watch that and you'll hear it from karen who actually plays the words of bob and jaren and if you're at all concerned about behind the curve and all of that drama you might want to check that out. So check out Karen B. She's in the live chat. It's an easy channel to find. It's the word Karen and the letter B. There's no punctuation. I mean, there's no periods or anything. And um, yeah, check that out. And I really uh, enjoyed watching it. And people have asked me about, oh, did Bob and Jaren prove curvature and the spin of the earth? I just share that video. And I'm like, it, sharing the video is another way of saying, well, I would say shut up, but that's kind of rude. But yeah. <laughs> I More like watch and learn. Watch my and my opinion, though, which I I think I stated like three or four months ago, I, hasn't really changed. And that is, what would you recommend to show a globalist for the first time? Mm. You know, how would you introduce a brand new, off the street, doesn't know jack about flat Earth? What would you What would you show them? And I, I'd still show it to them. I because, used to share ODD's flat Earth in five minutes. That was good. Oh, I mean, no, no, don't get me wrong. I mean, my playlist, the short list for new people, that hasn't changed. Right, right. Uh, however, it it seems that for whatever reason, again, flat earthers hate it. But the globalists, when they first watch the documentary, they seem to have a ton of questions. You know, they get flat smacked for an hour because they're engaged. Because you and I talked about this a little bit, and we won't drag this out too much. Which is the first 20, 30 minutes of it, they don't even think it's real when they're watching it. They mm -hmm. think it's 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 not. It's not a, it's not, you know, it's, it's an absolute, I'll call it a docufiction or mockumentary. They're watching it going, well, it's not, it's not real, honey. Don't. Yeah. Like that guy, Bob Nodell, he's not real. Is he? He's an actor. Yeah. Role. What else has he been in? <laughs> right. Again, the, the line from Nick's editor friend, which he saw it and was swore up and down that he was watching a piece of docufiction, a brilliant piece of docufiction because his mind couldn't even get around it. And then when he was told, it's like, no, there were no actors in that film. That's when it all just hit him. He's like, what the thing about the flat earth i'll say the word community i know a lot of people hate it but you know what i mean i mean all of us who are flat earthers we're, right. regardless of our map our model our religion our race blah, blah 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 whether we hate each other or not flat earth right. community okay okay um we all share the fact that water is always level that uh, ships don't disappear over the horizon um that the, there's been no recorded motion of the earth right. and that we've been lied to by the powers it should not be we each pick specialty areas in which to try to get that out to the public but we're all on the same page yep. and that's the thing i think we should focus on as opposed to the waste of energy yeah. with nope. the infighting and the finger pointing i mean i know no one is won't help, no one is going to quit flat earth because of this no no, no one no, no one is going to do oh, it. Oh, saw behind the curve. Saw, that, that, That's that, it. Pack it up. Bye, bye everybody. Good night, everybody. Good night, everybody. Bye. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Not happening. That is not going to. No. In fact, it 
it probably angered, it fueled people. And I said this in my little rant, which has been replicated a few times, which is it will make people want to be better. You want to oh, know, yes. look, it's a learning curve, which yes. is you want to know how to be around media, learn from this. I mean, we all learn from this. We all learn from this that you might want to research whatever the people that you're speaking to, even if they're a small independent film company, company like Behind the Curve, you right. want to see what else they did first. Yeah. And if they did anything that's kind of a little weird, like saying Sandy Hook was real, then you might think, mm, I don't know. I don't know. I need to talk to these people further. But in the end, these people were super nice. We have to realize that people who are super nice to your face sometimes can have ulterior motives. I mean, I'm, a, I'm an example of that that's been played out live right here on Flat Earth with people that I've encountered that appeared super nice that turned and, out to be the And circumstance, circumstances change, as you yes. know, especially in the entertainment industry, which was, and I, I felt bad about that, which was, you know, like, for example, they own all the, you know, they shot, yeah, they released 100 minutes, but they shot 30 hours at least. They might end up releasing that. No, no, and here's the oh, catch. Here's yeah, the yeah catch. you're right. Here's the catch. And that is, if the pl if the fish that eat that eats the project is big enough, that's in the contract, which is, mm -hmm. oh yeah, by the way, we own all the B-roll, all of it. Mm -hmm. And at that point, what are you going to do? Are you not, if, not, again, I'm not defending either side here. At that point, it's like, yeah, but we promised Jaren some footage. Yeah, I know he did. <laughs> you sign it, and that's it. It's gone. There's not, and then you try to apologize to Jaren. So unfair. Yeah. They promised Jaren footage. He didn't record on his own because they said they'd give him the footage. Then when he right. contacted them for the footage, they basically said that we can't do that right now. Yeah, yeah. Well, they, it, it was a, it was a catch twenty two. Your mom baked those people cookies. Exactly. Exactly. It's catch twenty two, which was they at one. Yes, they couldn't. They couldn't give him the footage until they sold it. And then once they sold it, unfortunately, they sold all the footage. So he wasn't going to, chances were, were high. He was never going to get it in, in at all. Now, the bigger question, which you and I kind of like dreaded, which is, okay, the people that bought the, the, all the B-roll, mm -hmm. do they just throw it in a box or do they use it later for something else? We don't Maybe know. it will go with all the quote unquote telemetry data that's been lost. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, uh, I mean, we still to this day, and we don't, you know, it's going to be tough to find. We still don't know who exactly bought it, right? Right. We don't know the production. We don't know who it was sold to. I wonder how much money Carolyn, Daniel Clark, and the crew got from behind the curtain. Uh, depends when when it comes to producing. You know, money is just energy. Yeah. Okay. It's it's it. how much you put in versus mm -hmm. how much you get out. You know, what's your stake in it? You know, was there a contract between Caroline? We made them. We offered up the flat Earth International <laughs> Conference. What are we, the mafia? We certainly are. We brought um, them off. Without without us, they're nothing. You are made. They man. hadn't been a successful production company yet and had nothing on Netflix until we offered up through the kindness of the community, the Flat Earth International Conference with Robbie Davidson and Raleigh, the first one, and all that awesome footage of all those awesome people. Yeah. And of course, you know, all of us, Bob, Jaron, myself, Nathan, everyone speaking with them, feeding them, housing them in yeah. some cases, and treating them you know, very respectfully. And they put that all in a film and they knew that they were going to grind us under their heel. They uh, knew it. They again, knew it because again. they're ball believers I, and they say, think we're crazy, but I, yeah, I'm, I'm disappointed think, in them. And I, I hope there's a moment of conscience that hits I, them right before they go to sleep at night. And they have a feeling where they feel sorry for what they've done to a wonderful, flourishing, growing community they might not believe in, but we're people too. And we didn't deserve that. We did not deserve that. Agreed. 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 I still don't think, my personal opinion is I don't think it was malicious until they saw, again, until the kids got involved. Maybe. And Maybe. then and then it was like, we've got to, we can't just, you know, we, we have to take action. It's like, yeah, I guess, but come on. They just saw Flat Earth as being something trending, and they're like, oh, you can make money off that. That's it, really. Basically. Well, I mean, come on. That's... I don't think they were out to get Flat Earth. They're like, well, that's something popular. Let's see I what... was, in, in some ways, again, it, this will this will only help in the end, but I was just glad because there it will. I it mean, will. How, many, how many producers we talked to before this that oh, would not many. pull the trigger? Many, many. Yeah. Many. So, hey, at least they, at least they got it done. 
And yeah, they did. And in the end, I've received, as has anyone in it and everyone else who's just a flat earther with the video out there who doesn't even really have a channel that's like, quote unquote, popular, which according to YouTube means over 10,000 subs. That's a stupid way to define popular. But that's I how you trust anybody over 10,000 subs. Yeah, crazy. Yeah. Um, yeah. And then when you get to 10,000 subs, you have to say, you have to push that up a little higher. <laughs> yeah, you're always it. Yeah, you always look at whoever's whoever's ahead of you. Yeah. So. Well, in the end, it's going to work for the good because we've all received more attention. Father's receiving attention. We're in Newsweek magazine. Remember everyone? Remember in 2015 when you know we were, were like, "Hello, again. anyone yeah. out there?" You know, oh, or 2014? Oh my God. Are you kidding? I remember. Oh no, I remember the first article. It was Forbes magazine mm -hmm. when Kent Hovind got out of prison. Right, and that. Yeah, and, and he's not even really in the flat Earth community. They asked him about flat Earth. Remember? Like, yeah, look, we got we Go got ahead. a mention, and yeah. now and now it's like, yeah, Jaron's getting literally assaulted by Newsweek, and we're like, oh, yeah. that's that's bummer, man. You remember Jaron's boat? The story about Jaron's boat? I think that might have been 2015 or early 2016. Those uh, who've been around long enough, 2016, will know. But it, it was early, and and that was early days where Jaron was getting mentioned by mainstream media. Now it's like. In a way, I'm not saying that flat earthers are celebrities. None of us want that. But the thing is, is that Jaren's being, you know, slammed in Newsweek magazine yeah. in some weird way. Flat Earth's being talked about in a huge platform. Yeah. I, I again, we're we're media spoiled, and I don't want to yeah. uh, belittle, you know, make light of the point. But come on, there are people out there. There are channels that would kill. Oh yes, for, for the negative press we get. The all publicity is good publicity thing. I mean. It's yeah. true. If I were being slammed by fill in the blank media company, I would be happy because I know human nature. You, be you bald or be you flat. If you, remember, you hear about something, you're going to look into it. Yeah. All humans, all of them, even the ones who cling onto the ball tightly and make hit piece videos, they're going to look at those articles. And, you know, it's, it's like Pandora's box. Once you open it, lots of stuff comes out. And it forces it on you. Yeah. That's what behind the curve has done for many people. It said, we are loud. We are proud. We are kind of normal, or we're at least as kooky as you out there in the audience. Right. And we're not going anywhere. We're only yeah. growing. Yeah, we're, we are truly everywhere, though. I mean, <laughs> there, is, there is nothing we can't get into at this point. And I, I, I love, I, I, I enjoy the, the troll, even though I hate him. I enjoy the the troll channels coming in, or even like you know, Mister Granola Head uh, coming out. It's like he's not even a he's not even a conspiracy channel. He's just an, a guy that does ASMR. I mean, if we're pr promoting, if we're provoking him to get into the flat Earth arena, yes. there's almost no limit to what we. It doesn't can do. matter if you're against flat Earth. You're saying the words flat Earth, yeah. and for people out there who haven't heard of it yet, they're going to say to themselves, "Honey, what's all this about flat Earth?" Yeah. Yeah, another Bingo. another six six hundred thousand subs. Yeah, thanks. Yeah. We'll take it. Thanks. Thank you very much. Yeah. I mean and, and behind the curve, if they felt if they felt that this was going to hurt flat earth or bury flat earth, sorry. That didn't oh. happen. It's having the opposite effect. They they lose. They yeah, lose. And true. of course they get a lot of money off our backs, but they still lose. Agreed. Um, somebody is asking, Pe oh, sorry, Peanuts Clark has asked uh, why YouTube is not recommending Flat Earth videos. YouTube's uh, changed the algorithm after a government um, meeting in which people were complaining that Flat Earth videos were being recommended. And, and of course, we, we need are. to protect the children. Well, okay, okay. To be fair. What kind of lip balm is that? Is that we've been watching this for, for <laughs> almost two years, which is Flat Earth is being recommended excessively excessively i mean look up jfk flat earth uh you know pearl harbor flat earth mm -hmm. potato salad flat earth yeah it's i mean how to do your nails in red white and blue flat earth <laughs> yeah it, to where i love that one video that i put out oh god it was at least two years ago where a guy came on and he was trying to he was literally asking people how to get things not to be recommended and he called us out by name and he keeps saying no do not want no refuse cancel and we just kept popping up and kept popping right. up. it's changed so, now though yeah that's supposedly well they're trying well they maybe that's because flat earth in the title dirge is in the dark says maybe it should be nasa lies maybe we could use that as keywords eh, you we know what work around we could do a workaround 
I, I wouldn't worry about too much. I mean, the topic is so huge right now. I mean, look, do you believe in coincidences? I don't. Where once they, right after they mentioned that, we get into Netflix. And now, YouTube, who cares? You know, now, now it's freaking everywhere. Now it's all. My all own brother, who's four years younger than I, name yeah. is Timothy Steer. He's got a Facebook page. And a lot of haters have found his Facebook page and tried to position it as he is really me. You know, the people who say I'm a man. Sure. Whatever. Um, my brother um, is into metal music, rock and roll ever since high school when he changed in high school. One day I heard him playing the Eagles and the next is Motley Crue. I don't know what happened, but something happened. And that's right. lifestyle. He's got full sleeve tattoos. He's not a Satan worshiper or anything like that. He's my wonderful little brother, just a good guy, a really good person. And he owns a clothing store, rock and roll t-shirt shop in New Orleans. You know, we talk, you know, some of Flat Earther. I've mentioned him before. He's not into it. But all of a sudden, as people were posting about Behind the Curve and Flat Earth on my page, and he doesn't pay much attention to my Facebook page at all, right. he came in and started commenting. He saw the Netflix documentary. Yeah. He also took note when I did an interview, it's on my channel, uh, with CBS and Jane Pauley, the you know famous news person, introduced it. He messaged me and he wrote, Jane Pauley, huh? Really? Jane Pauley? What he was kind of saying is, sister, you know, I love you. I think you're kind of crazy, but I, I, I know you're not stupid. Yeah. Uh, really? Seriously, Jane Pauley? Netflix? Uh, I'm actually going to start paying a little more attention to you now. Right. So, you know, they always say flat earth ruins families, destroys family ties. Guess what? My brother's talking to me more now, taking me more seriously because of flat earth. And I think other people are having the same experiences we actually may be rebuilding families after tearing it apart <laughs> in the first place yeah, exactly awesome. flat earth tears families apart but puts them back together better than before and hey you know it is all fun and games until jane Pauley gets involved exactly. and then it's serious <laughs> oh wow so yeah i think we've done else? a show you want to do your shout outs before we yeah, uh, that's exactly can you read my mind i know right well no i i I'm glad uh, you can. What, what have you? <laughs> hey, how about those shout outs? Mm, yeah. Hello to Bill Keith and Joe Mama and Closet Steve, Dr. Michael Miller, who's here in the live chat, and Brian Burton, Angel Raven 444, Irk Childs, Brian Stavely, CVH, who says, Feel the love. Uh, Brian something, Midi HC, Dennis L, Ute, hello. Hello to Zulu One. Zulu asked earlier, uh, if I'd got some sun, no, or earlier in the show, I was, you know, kind of just fooling around and I slapped myself in the face. And that's probably why my cheeks are red. Uh, and hello. drinking. And drinking. Yeah. Slapping yourself in the face and drinking. Those two things kind of go. That would do it. Yeah. Hey to Johnny and Hong Hui Nig, 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 NG, 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 Ng. I don't know how to say it. Uh, <laughs> sorry. Brian Burton, hello. Hello to Bob. Globusters and Karen B, who I mentioned earlier, and Cole Beard. And I'm scrolling up here. Um, Walter Williams, hello. Um, who else? GM, CD, XX, and Spherical Cow, hi there. Rachel Hilgert and Quebec, flat south shore of Montreal. I love Montreal. Hello to Chris Topher. Chris, you got to send me a brand new screen. Uh, screenshot so that I can use it for a new video. He makes really, really good thumbnails for some of my uh, videos. Hello to um, the Jedi of Truth. Hmm. Also, hi to Ben Hickleton and Dennis L, Super Mario, and I'm still scrolling here, a UWL QS Earther, and uh, all people free people who said the documentary is putting us on the map. We have arrived. Um, F-U-C-T use is here as well. And you know why I didn't say it? I spelled it. Hello to Dirges in the Dark uh, and Peanuts Clark, I mentioned earlier, and Darker Sandman. Um, Midi HC, hello there. Shane Woodard, Mr. Popzilla, and let me name a few more names. I appreciate you all being here. Rodrigo Ferrari Nunez is here. Check that channel out, Rodrigo Ferrari slash Nunez or Dash Nunez. He does very good critical analysis of how the media portrays Flat Earth. Serious stuff. 
check it out. Hello to Cami Aisling 717 and um, still scrolling past names I've already mentioned before. Um, Israel Adams, hey, long time no see. Nice to see you here. Walter Williams, I mentioned earlier, mentioning him again. Shane Woodward, Woodard is here. Nathan Oakley, 1980. And um, I think I'll stop because I don't want to bore people. Nathan Oakley is going to be on with me for our show that we try to do every Thursday called Uncurved. And that's at 5 p.m. Eastern time right here. And um, I am going to be talking about astrology. Yeah, astrology with a special guest on Friday here on this channel. I'm a and double Gemini with a bad moon rising. I bet you've got a bad moon on the rise. No, I'm a Taurus. <laughs> Are you a Taurus? Yeah. Just like my brother. Yeah. Interesting. Taurus. Taurus super, the mess, mess with the bull, get the horns. Exactly. And I'm um, super stubborn. Yeah. And, you know, astrologically, I'm an Aquarius. We're not a good match as a romantic thing, but we're a great match as friends. Really? There's romance in friendship in a weird way. You have a love for each other that may even be better than romantic love. Might last longer. Hmm. Um. I didn't know you were Taurus. I mean, I know when your birthday is, I just never thought about it. True, I'm Taurus. I, I'm interested in astrology a lot, in fact. Uh, but when Flat Earth came along, I'm like, yeah, you know, before I thought Flat Earth was, I mean, excuse me, astrology was cool, but stars are so far away. How could they have any effect on us? The but stars are a whole lot closer. Yeah, it's so, intimate. Yeah, it's right here. And mm -hmm. the the app that DITRH has put out, everyone knows about that app. It's got the, the flat earth clock sort of thing. Whether or not you believe in the AE map, the app's pretty cool. Uh -huh. And they just added an ast astrological level to it. So the ast astrological signs are all laid on top. So I've got a guest named John who's going to be on uh, on Friday here at 6 p.m. Eastern. So Nathan Oakley at 5 p.m. Eastern for Uncurved Thursday the 28th. And then on the uh, 1st of March, I'm going to have John talking about astrology. Who's a flat earther, by the way? So we'll talk about his flat earth journey, what his deal is with astrology. We'll get into astrology. I don't know. Maybe I'll see what he knows about different signs, what it means. And I started looking into your moon sign. I, I just thought just your sun sign, you know, Aquarius for me, because I was born February 5th. That's all there was. There's a lot more since I don't know a lot about astrology. I looked at my moon sign. It's cancer. And it made me think... Wow, I know about cancer. They love their home, which I do. They're very emotional and sensitive, which I am. But Aquarius doesn't have those aspects in it. It's more of the, Aquarius is more of the person that we all, I project to you. It is me, but it's what I show. But cancer, the moon, for all of us, the moon sign is what's inside you. And then there's rising signs and blah, blah, blah. And it's very fascinating stuff. Hmm. And I found out Roxanne Glenn is an Aquarius just like me, her moon sign is also cancer, just like me. So there have been some Flat Earth haters who have said, Roxanne Glenn is the controlled chill of the UK, just like the UK version of Patricia Steer. But guess what? We've got the same sun sign and same moon sign, and we're doing the same Ooh. thing. We're fighting for truth. <laughs> so, nice. Anyway, check it out Friday if you're interested in astrology. Cool. And I know a lot of people think it's Satan worship and all that. We're not talking about that at all, at all, period, end of. <laughs> period end of nice well, that's it really anything else you need to add that you've got coming up we mean after all that stuff no yeah, i know is there anything we haven't uh covered we've covered a anything. lot of stuff today uh and nope, i didn't even nope. finish my little shot drink i did drink it drink it drink drink drink, drink. okay while she's drinking uh <laughs> i will be planning on speaking with all the children about uh -oh. flat earth. The brainwashing Spooky. will commence. Ooh, spooky. Scared. Yes, Hi, one the king. of us. One of us. And that's what they're all going to be chanting by the end of it. Right. So, and then I'll send them to, I don't know, some library and burn it down. Yeah. Well, yeah, yeah you know, I guess. Because you got to have goals. Right. Yeah. Indeed. My goal is next secret show next Wednesday, I will be wearing a garbage bag. And those <laughs> who don't understand why, You're well. Right rewind and find out and those who do understand why look forward to that i will make it work <laughs> cool yeah all right that's it that's the all show right. all right and i will be releasing just so you guys know i'm gonna be releasing all the interviews as soon as i'm gonna record all of them 
and uh, and release them the second I I can. And oh yeah, sorry the the two interviews that we did down at um, or mm -hmm. I did two, you did one mm -hmm. down in LA. Mm -hmm. uh, we who knows? We have no control over it. Oh, we have no and uh, QE2019.com. If you didn't go, oh, yeah, that that yeah. whole thing will be released to the public as soon as Joe Garcia gets a hold of it. Oh, and I'm right. going to be talking about cannabis with one of the gentlemen that I mentioned, cannabis oil and those sorts of things involving healing with a guy that I met at QE2. And cool. um, so that's coming up next week. All right, then. Well, all right, all right, then. I love everyone, and even the people who hate flat earth and who hate me, Mark, or any other people that were in behind the curve. Because l love is the way, love is the way forward. Hate is nothing, it's useless, it will never get us anywhere, and it burns you up and eats you up inside. So get rid of hate. Whatever, eat dirt, I got guns. All right then, and on that note, keep it flat. George Clooney, hail Hydra, go PowerCoin. <laughs>